Hello and welcome back to Hard West, our tactical simulator for a good old western shootout. We left the campaign the last time when we finished Hard Times, which is the first scenario of the whole game, and today we're going to play to, uh, through the second scenario. And before we start, two pieces of information that might be interesting for you. Number one, I found out what uh, the uh, bug for the inventory had been. So slow loading inventories apparently are a graphical card issue. So I installed the newest graphical drivers and that is supposed to fix it. I hope uh, that uh, this will work. So that was uh, info number one in case it happens to you. Info number two, whenever I play a game and have uh, the have a problem or uh, have basically hit a roadblock i re reflect about what i could do better so the learning from hard times was uh, there is a overwatch mechanic uh, inside this game and the overwatch mechanic exclusively works for enemies whenever you are within five tiles of an enemy they can take an overwatch shot and the way that weapons work um, they deal a lot of damage when you have no cover at all, so it basically prevents just running next to a, an enemy point blank and shooting him to the face. We have learned that the hard way. We um, already lost the first scenario once through it, and I'm dedicated to not to do that again. Today we're looking into mad methods in madness, Solomon Delaire unexpectedly inherits great wealth and a dangerous mission to cure the madness spreading across the region. Aided by a mysterious benefactor, he delves ever deeper into the unexplored reaches of the human mind. <coughs> Let's start that scenario. We're going again with the hardest difficulty, combat injuries, Iron Man, and let's go. Back in the days when the West was wild, anarchy ruled, and madness spread across the land. A genius inventor by the name of Tumorcliff worked on a cure for this madness, but didn't manage to complete his undertaking. The word of his demise reached his not-so-friendly rival, Solomon Delir. Much to his surprise, Tumorcliff's will stated that Delir could have his lab and all his equipment if he agreed to continue Trimmercliff's work. But when Solomon arrived there, he found the place ransacked and overrun by gun-toting madmen. <laughs> All right, let's hope that Solomon Delaire is a gun-wielding madman himself, because elsewise this is going to be a short adventure. There we go. Delir was nervous and thought about fleeing. Then, three massive Pinkertons appeared. Each introduced himself in turn, but all three had the same name, Mr. Persons. They explained <laughs> that they had been hired to protect him, but declined to say by whom. Kill all the madmen, okay. So the inventory loads immediately, that's great. We don't have any cards. And A, pers uh, A persons, B persons, and C persons apparently are three of the same kind. The one has ricochet, the other one has golden bullet, and the uh, third has B steering. Um, they got some nice rifles, I give them that. Solomon de Lair himself, besides having the nicest hair in the Wild West, has a six shooter and a normal western rifle. And that's pretty much it. No one else is uh, essential, so we just need to make sure that this guy is going to be okay. Evade the enemies, once suspicious, they will eventually attack, subdue, uh, subdue them to delay their reaction. Um, we need to kill the madman. And I'm not even sure where the madman is. We're definitely in the setup phase, so that's an advantage. Uh, 
What we certainly don't want to do is just go um, go in without uh, preparing accordingly. So let's just take a look to the right hand side and see if we can somehow get inside of the house. Notice that there seems to be someone there. So far we're still in the setup phase. Okay, that's close. So I think we cannot get this guy. It's unlikely. Which means this whole area here seems to be somewhat, somewhat protected because the way he's standing there, I don't believe that we can really subdue him. These three, however, can be subdued to get into the central building. But once we're there, That here is Deleric Madman. I think he's the guy that we're after. So if our job is to get him, maybe we need to subdue the guys um, in front. However, that's not going to be so easy. I suppose, since they are giving one another cover, we might as well go to here, because that's the only place where you can start subduing and then we kind of chain subdue them. I think the way that subdue works, unless I'm like totally wrong, um, the others will not notice it unless it's directly in their vision range. Okay, let's give it a try in case this backfires. Um, In case that backfires, we're, we're going to start the fight here. Alright. So... Oh, I see. I mean, we could theoretically subdue him. I thought we, you need to stand, like, right next to him. But apparently that's not the case. Which then again leads me to uh, leads me to believe if we were to move in here and we literally take a shot from here to here, that would be good as well. I just have a bad feeling about standing like in the middle of the open. Let's not do this. So we're moving all to the right hand side. And eventually we'll get into this building and set it up from here. Alright, so C person is going to subdue Schizophrenic Madman. Well, it says kill all the madmen, so... This guy is subdued. We'll subdue the other guy next. Uh, 
I mean, maybe I'm seeing something wrong, but if we just take good cover here to have the central central court um, covered, and we're just making sure that nothing uh, or no one stands back there, we should be fine. So, I'm just taking positions here to make sure that we're that we're going to be able to um, shoot at the guys in the courtyard. All right, moving further in, just to double check that there is no one back here. Oh, there is another door. And there is another door. Which I knew there would be someone in here. I think we barely evaded his vision range. Not sure. Not sure. I think we might have been spotted out. No, we haven't. Which kind of brings me to an interesting question. So if we were to start with the deadly Deringer, that wouldn't work super well. The scoped custom rifle though would at least kill this guy. So I mean we can kill him and then move into full cover and basically snipe into this room. That would work. We're killing this guy and move to the door and we take the other two and take the outer area which means we do have a pretty nice solid line and no one behind us. That should work. Not sure if that's how the tactic here is intended, but let's give it a go. There we go. No more time for pleasantries. See person is taking a solid cover before deciding to shoot this guy right into the face. Hmm. Maybe we're walking over here and just defend that side with three. That wouldn't be too bad either. Nah. Let's follow our original plan. Probably should have uh, should have taken the sniper and put him here. Uh, now we do have a guy with a normal pistol here. Yeah, we we get a bit of a distance. Well, it's okay. It's an okay distance.
Well, the enemy certainly takes cover. And we have a full-fledged shootout. So, yes, the original plan to annoy everyone and and uh, start a combat definitely worked. We're reloading the sniper. Bring ourselves next to the door, just to flank some enemies. Um, we do have a ricochet here. Unfortunately, we can't, I think we can't hit her with a ricochet. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah, I th unfortunately these uh, devices here are in, in the way, so we can't really hit him. But we can start depleting the luck of these characters. Most of them currently have, I would say, around 30 luck. So that would barely be a hit. We could have, of course, also start to fan. But with the with the malus of taking multiple shots, we're not even going to hit. It's interesting how how far our ricochet shot could actually last. There are many, many ricochet uh, items here. Yeah, but unfortunately, always something in the way. Um, so yeah, let's just take a shot and soften this guy up. I thought the cone would hit everyone in range. It's interesting that it doesn't. This here, by the way, is a suicidal maneuver. I, I really don't know why she would be standing in the open. Moving a bit to the front. Ah, Solomon misses. Unfortunate. We can kill either of these guys with the golden bullet, which we're probably going to do. Reloading and let's kill her. Like I said, I, I really don't know why she would be standing there. That wasn't clever at all.
Alright, time for a golden bullet. Nice one. We got the achievement Blind Justice. So I think we're only having two enemies left over. This scenario seems to be like a very easy fight. This guy, by the way, did a massive mistake by moving in there. Because we can just switch our uh, cover again and just kill him. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. So, by the way, this here is a dangerous position. I mean, we can't just move here because that could trigger the shot and we don't want to lose Solomon Belair. Which means we slowly but surely need to move up with the others as well. And we always want to put the them in a spot where they cannot just be flanked. See, would we have just moved up here, we would have gotten killed. And this is actually again quite dangerous because we don't know what's behind the door, right? Take another golden bullet. And that guy had more than four hit points. Which is threatening. Maybe a boss. But somehow the enemy decides not to do anything. Instead, they are just standing around. Now we know there are only three more enemies. Oh, we're being flanked. Oh, we're being flanked. Moving and repositioning. Unfortunately, we got only got uh, three damage going. There we go. I think we should reload from time to time, by the way. Because we're almost out of ammunition. And I think this is also the last enemy. No, remaining one, okay. Well, in which case, let's reload. 
the remaining en enemy is most likely going to be up there. Reloading, reloading, and reloading. Reloading. And reloading. I imagine everyone is like, okay, I need to reload my gun at the same time. So now we can proceed slowly but surely. It's Uh, dude, that's the wrong direction. Well, maybe not. Maybe I just missed uh, that the last guy is in there. So we got him cornered. Oh wait a second! Why? Why? My bad. I shouldn't. I should never end the movement turn in an open field. That's just a stupid idea. There we go. The laboratory was finally cleared of lunatics. Delir breathed a sigh of relief as he sat down to begin his research. Alright guys, mission complete. Very nice. I'll take 30 seconds off and we'll be right back whilst this is still loading. Laboratory Delir. If you're reading this, it means I have succumbed to the madness. You have arrived here exactly as I planned. You may be asking yourself why the greatest inventor of uh, our time would move to the hard lands of the West. It is a fair question. After being informed that the land was being ravaged by a plague of madness, I offered my help to a man known as the Protector. I believed that by using the modern, objective principle of science, I could devise a method to erase this madness. But as I come closer to a cure, I can feel my mind slipping away. I fear I may not even be able to complete my work. The notes in this safe compromise everything I've learned thus far. For the sake of your fellow men, finish what I've started. Cure this madness. You are the only one left with an uh, ingenuity required to accomplish this uh, Herculean feat of intellect. Sincerely, Truman Cliff. A few days later, the laboratory was restored. Solomon could um, barely contain his excitement. It was a perfect place to work on a revolutionary new technology, <coughs> and Truman Cliff's blueprint would give him a helpful head start. Each patient requires a blueprint. Blueprints belong to one of three fields, chemistry, engineering and gunsmithing. 
each new patient, unlocks additional development opportunities each patient, enables you to order new items from the nearby shops. Chemistry allows you to create different usable items for healing and improving performance. Engineering provides passive upgrades and throwable items that deteriorate enemies' performance and gunsmithery enables you to construct powerful weapons. Solomon chooses to focus on. That's a good question. Hmm. Well, Solomon is an engineer at heart, so I think he would go for engineering. Solomon had yet to do any engineering research. He hoped his first breakthrough would allow him to patient assorted parts and noise and the noise bomb. Assorted parts when an assortment of versatile parts that could fix almost any device. The noise bomb reduced the aim and defense capabilities of enemies caught in the blast. Solomon requires a blueprint to inspire his research. Well, we just patented the assorted parts and the noise bomb, I suppose. And look at that. We have three research levers and Solomon is beginning to visit the nearby workshop. Solomon entered the workshop. It was an utter mess. He spent the rest of the day restoring tools and operational uh, to an operational state so that he could begin building prototypes for his new patents. Um, the raw materials uh, stocks were empty and the only way to restock uh, them was through the Pony Express. That meant that each prototype would come at a cost. So Solomon ordered the parts via the Pony Express to craft the item. And boy, oh boy, we do have a hundred gold, and that's pretty much it. Let's go with four and let's say three. Cliff's notes suggested the natives knew what caused the madness. Delir decided to pay them a visit and try to find out <coughs> what they knew. Yo, 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 wait a second. Chemistry allows you to create different usable items for healing. Let's use engineering. Solomon invent, invented the pet, uh, patented uh, stun bomb. So we do no longer we do no longer have um, uh, a blueprint. From now on, we need to find them. Blueprints belong to three fields: chemistry, engineering, and gunsmithing. You know what? Do we have do we have blueprints for the other areas? Let's say gunsmithery. No. Okay. So now that we have ordered the workshop items, okay. What exactly have we ordered? We have ordered assorted parts. Noise bombs. Loud bang is virtually the only thing that an enemy can focus on. Decrease aim and defense. Well, the good part is we're having a couple of new trinkets. So tobacco increases aim. That's well, fine for me.
Somehow I'm not really 100% sure how to use uh, the new items. But let's see, I mean, we still have a couple of cards, but apparently the cards are not being, like, taken over. Um, or maybe we're just, Solomon just has different cards, right? First and foremost, I don't understand why the sniper isn't using both of these cards. Yeah, that ma might make more sense. So, then we do have senses nearby enemies, the king of diamonds, and we do have the queen. We actually have a pair of queens. Shriek and Shadow Cloak is super good. That's something that we could give uh, Solomon himself. He gets a decent movement bonus. Also, Shriek is a really good ability. Then we do have a third ability, which allows us to get a pair of three. Increases the luck. That means we have more golden shots. So having um, a pair of three tens is really, really uh, nice. Yeah, and we got the king of diamonds. That's fine. Good start with regards to the cards. Let's see. We got ourselves the Fate Trader. I like these relics, but unfortunately we don't have um, the money at the moment to, to buy them. So, Death Embraces Gunsmiths. Um, Arno Sharinga was intelligent but par paranoid. His, uh, despite, uh, dis yet despite his quirks, he impressed uh, the Pinkertons with his experience. Okay, so here would be um, a couple of really nice weapons. Well, mostly they are in line with what we've seen. Probably this one here is a bit better. Short range, six damage weapon isn't bad. Ruined Mansion, once majestic home, the Ruined Mansion now retained only the shadow of its former glory. Solomon knocked to no one available. Solomon arrived at the dilapidated uh, cottage inhabited by the Thurner family, a strange group that uh, laughed at even the most uh, solemn things. He invited them for dinner, uh, they invited him for dinner. Uh, Solomon is a good guy, so he's not going to rob them. One of the Pinkertons accepted their offer, but fell sick soon afterwards. Later, tormented by a horrible walking nightmare, he perished. Oh, wow, now Solomon definitely um, will, will not uh, kill them, but Solomon confronts the family. They begged for their lives and gave him a blueprint signed by a, a true Mercliffe. Would Solomon kill them? You know, I mean, Solomon is a clever guy, and I think he doesn't trust his... Um, his bodyguards all too much. They look pretty shady, to be uh, honest, so Solomon would leave the family uh, alone. A new Pinkerton arrived shortly. The death of his predecessor had slight but noticeable impact of, uh, on Solomon's mind. All right, what kind of slight but noticeable impact? Okay. 
So let's give the green guy let's give the green guy the sniper gun. That's fine. Okay. Derailed train. Solomon arrived at the scene of a terrible catastrophe. Inside the crashed train sat a single uh, conscious man surrounded by bodies. He was covered in blood, but otherwise appeared well. He introduced himself as James Scheffler and assured Solomon that he had once been a doctor. He asked whether Solomon and his can uh, companion needed any help. No, we don't, but that's super kind of him. Ghost Town. The inhabitants of this town had become so crazed or so terrified that they had left, seemingly suddenly, all at once. Buildings stood abandoned as decay slowly crept in. Solomon wondered whether they have left anything useful behind. Solomon performed a thorough search, allowing the madness of the place to leave an imprint on his mind. Oh yeah. Your search yielded several items, including liquor from a secret stash, a notebook from the Turner's deputy, Dead Eye Dean. Dean wrote, wrote that the Sheriff Turner arrested lawful citizen for crimes they didn't commit, and every accusation ended on, uh, ended on the gallows. Sheriff Turner had become convinced that every person in his town was a criminal. After reading through the notebook, Solomon felt this tainted place has left a mark on his soul. Hmm. I'm wondering where I would see the, the mental stat. Indian village. The natives told him about the comet they have seen shortly before the people began going mad. Everyone had twisted dreams that night. A man who lived in the ruined mansion could tell him more, but Solomon would need to give him the password Jade is the gem of greed. Okay, ruined mansion. No, we're not giving them assorted parts. Although, wait a second. Uh, assorted parts costed 5 and that'll be an investment of 15, but we gained 50. So yeah, sure. Let's see what they have. Um, normal sturdy shoes look interesting, but we only have 90 gold, so we're going to keep it low for now. Ruined Mansion. Once the majestic home, the Ruined Mansion now retained only a shadow of its former glory. Solomon looked and said, Jade is the game of greed. At Solomon's word, the door sprang open. Behind it was an elderly man who invited Solomon inside and asked if he would like some refreshment. The inside of the house was also in ruins and the whole building looked as though it might collapse any moment. The elder man spoke to him about the origins of the madness. He said the, uh, they remembered uh, the night it had begun. The same night, a comet blazed across the sky and everyone he knew was touched by a terrible nightmare. Father Gilmore had organized an asylum in the church of the southwest uh, west in the attempt to cure the sick. Though he was able to gain much insight into the disease and recorded in his notes, the madman turned on him at their first opportunity and tore him apart. 
At Solomon's words, the door sprang open. Behind them was an elderly man. Okay, we had that. So when we asked him about the land, the old man spoke at length about the reactions of the three prominent members of the local community. First he spoke of uh, Trumbercliff, uh, the insane genius who created secret notes about the comet and the invisible ink um, on top of the decoy documents. Then he told the story about Sheriff Turner, a wise and just law uh, lawman who became paranoid after the comet's arrival. Uh, it began uh, his reign of terror in which he built an army of madmen and criminals who hunted like a pack of ravaging wolves. Finally, he spoke of his own son, Alvaro, who went for look, uh, to look for an ancient native city and never returned. Mm. As we reach Asylum, the church um, has never been refitted to function as an Asylum. The old man had told him of this place. And when we approached and reached Asylum, we had our guns ready. So I assume that's the next fight. And that means it's a good cliffhanger for the end of the first video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please like it, but also leave a comment down below. That signals YouTube you like the content and uh, it'll allow us to grow the channel. Thank you so much and have a great evening.